Hello viewers, so hope you're all doing good. Welcome to this video. My name is Nawaz and you're watching NXA, the Linux Guy channel. Right, in this video, let's see how to configure an auto scaling group. Uh, if you remember my previous video, I have configured an elastic load balancer and I've only deployed one web server using the EC2 instance. So that's not a highly available scenario. If you want to deploy a highly available web application, you should always consider deploying your web application to multiple availability zones. So that's what we are trying to do and achieve in this video with the use of auto scaling groups. So I've got my little notes here. I will open that. Cool. So I'm going to be using my default VPC. This gray part is my default VPC and I will be in the North Virginia region, which has six availability zones here. I have shown four, but the idea is same. Cool. Okay. So when you create your Amazon free tier account, every account comes with a default VPC and in every region and every availability zone, you get one single public subnet. Um, I will do a separate video on how to create a custom VPC, private and public subnets, internet gateway, NAT gateway. But for this video, let's stick with the default VPC and the default subnets, right? So what are we trying to do in this video? In this video, we are going to create an auto scaling group, which consists of web servers and it will be deployed across these two availability zones, which is US East 1A and US East 1B. And our elastic load balancer will be deployed across these two availability zones for high availability. And regarding the security group, uh, our elastic load balancer will be exposed to the public. So the traffic will be hitting the elastic load balancer and the only traffic hitting our web servers will be from port 80 um, from the elastic load balancer. Uh, when I will configure the security group, you will understand what I'm saying. So I will give you a rough overview of the steps involved in this. Um, firstly, we're going to launch an instance as a web server. We're going to verify if it's working fine. And after that, we will create an image of that instance. So step one is to create an image. Step two is we will configure the load balancer and we'll configure it so that it's exposed to public. So step two is configure the load balancer. Step three, we will configure the auto scaling group. There we have two steps. First step is to create a launch configuration. Basically it just says what to launch. And secondly, we will um, configure the auto scaling group. Right. So let's see each of the steps. And when I'll show you this demo, you will understand what are all the steps that are involved in setting up a highly available web application. So I will open my management console here. Um, I have nothing except one default security group. Uh, let's launch an instance. Um, I'm going to use this AMI, P2 micro, here in the advanced details, I'm going to use the bootstrap script, shebang slash bin slash bash, um, yum minus y install httpd, I'm going to move my mouse cursor, um, check config httpd on, and I'm going to echo, let's say in h1 characters in center, and in bold, let's say, welcome to my world. And I'm going to redirect that to slash var slash dub 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 slash HTML and index.html file. And I'm going to start the service. So service HTTP day start. So this is the bootstrap script, a very simple script. Um, next, add storage. Let's go by default. Next, add tags. I'm going to add a tag. Let's say name and web template next configure security group uh, i'm gonna give this name web sg i'm gonna open port 22 and that will be for my ip also i'm gonna open port 80 for my ip as well cool review and launch launch let's create a key pair let's say um, web as demo download key pair and launch instances view instances so the instance is now being deployed let's wait till it's completely finished and after that we will verify if it's serving the right web page using this public ip and after that, we will create an image of this instance and we will terminate this instance because we no longer need this instance, right? So let's wait till this machine is ready. 
I'm gonna pause this video and come back when this is ready. Okay, the instance is now ready. Let's quickly verify if it's serving the right web page. Um, enter. Cool, so it's serving the right web page. Let's create an image. Image, create image. Let's give it a name. Let's say my custom web server. Create image. Um, so in this AMIs, you will see it is creating. Status is pending. Um, basically, it will take a snapshot of your instance and using that snapshot, it will create this image. So let's wait till this is completely finished. All right, so the image is now ready. Let's go to our instances and terminate this instance because we no longer need this instance. Terminate, yes, terminate and Okay, terminate, yes, terminate. So our instance is now shutting down. Let's wait till it's terminated. If I go to my dashboard, you will see one snapshot. Uh, so this is the snapshot. Also, we will delete the security group once this instance is completely terminated. So let's wait till it's terminated. Cool, so the instance is now terminated. Let's go to our security groups and delete this security group as well because to avoid uh, confusion. Yes, delete. Cool, so we have created the image. The first step is done. Right, so let's go ahead and configure the load balancer. So we have completed the step one. The step two is to create a load balancer and our load balancer will be exposed to public. Create application load balancer. Let's give it a name. Let's say web ELB. Scheme is internet facing. Um, listener is port 80. So this is where this get interesting. If you see this image, I want to deploy it across these two availability zones, which is US East 1A and 1B. So I'm gonna select this two availability zone and these two availability ha zone has a public subnet so that's cool because this is my default vpc we have a public subnet already if you have multiple subnets or you have a multiple vpc make sure your internet facing load balancer is always using your public subnet so that's very important keep that in mind your internet facing load balancer should be always using your public subnet next um, this is just a warning saying that we don't have HTTPS and we are really very cool with it. I'm going to ignore this. Next, configure security group. Uh, let's create a new security group. Let's say web ELB SG and I'm going to copy that and paste it here as well. So let's open port 80 which will be exposed to public because if you see the traffic will be hitting our elastic load balancer, right? So the load balancer is exposed to public cool next configure routing let's create a new target group let's say web servers target group um, target type is instance uh, protocol is http port is id advanced health check settings i'm gonna go by default values if you want you can play around with these values you got all the help required here um, next register targets so we don't have any instance running, so we won't be registering any targets. Um, when we will configure the auto scaling group, there we will give the load balancer, this load balancer, and also we will give the target group there. So it will be automatically registering the instance. Um, you will see that in a bit. Next, review and create. Close. So we have created the load balancer, the state is provisioning. Um, cool. So step two is completed. Let's go to auto scaling groups. Uh, let's create an auto scaling group. Okay. So under auto scaling group, we have two steps. First, we have to create a launch configuration, and the second, we have to create an auto scaling group. Okay. Get started. 
Um, here I'm going to choose my AMIs and we will select this AMI which we just created. Instance type is T2 micro because this is pre-tier eligible. Next, configure details. Um, let's give it a name. Let's say web server launch configuration. It wants details. Um, I'm, going, I'm not going to use any bootstrap script because our image has everything we need. Next, add storage. Um, we go by default. Next, configure security group. Cool. So I'm going to configure a security group here. Let's say web ASSG. I'm going to copy that and paste it here as well. So here, if I choose HTTP and custom IP, and if I start typing SG, you will see the security group of our load balancer, right? So our auto scaling group will be accepting traffic from only our load balancer. So that's what I was talking about. So, cool. Um, a review and create launch configuration. Yes, I acknowledge I have the key. Create launch configuration. So here we configure our auto scaling group. Let's give it a name. Let's say web server auto scaling group. Um, launch configuration is this which we have just created. Group size start with two instances so it will have two instances at any given time subnet if you see the image I want to use these two public subnets which is under US each 1A and 1B so if I click here I'm going to select 1A and 1B cool advanced detail so here um, you have to basically configure load balancer before configure your auto scaling group uh, if you didn't configure anything uh, your load balancer then these two columns will be grayed out and you won't be able to use this so you have to configure your load balancer before you configuring your auto scaling group right target groups if I click here where is our target group I will select this so this is the target group in which our instance will be registering health check type uh, there are two types of checks uh, let's go with ELB um, health check grace period I'm going to change this from 5 minutes to 30 seconds cool um, next configure scaling policies so I'm not going to configure any scaling policies in this demonstration I will do this in my future videos but for this video let's keep it simple I don't want to make it more confusing um, I will show you how you can do that if you select this here you can scale between the instances let's say two and maybe you want to scale between four you can scale by average CPU utilization maybe your um, CPU utilization is more than 80 percent then it will deploy a new instance um, you can also create a new alarm increase group size decrease group size basically you have you can create an alarm same way we have created the billing alert you have to create a topic and subscribe to that topic and you will be notified right so in this video I'm not going to touch all this um, I will keep it simple okay close this and close um, I'm gonna use this keep this group at its initial size so at any given time we will have two instances up and running right next configure notification so this is another notification specifically for your auto scaling group um, you can also add notification create topic subscribe to the topic same way I won't do this in this video probably in my future videos next configure tags uh, I don't want to add any tag review cool uh, create auto scaling group so our auto scaling group has been created um, here you can say this is our auto scaling group using this launch configuration and these are the availability zones the default cooldown is 300 seconds basically your instance once it's taken down it won't be deployed uh, by the next second it will wait for 300 seconds and after that it will deploy a new instance right and the health check grace period is 30 seconds it will check for about after every 30 seconds if your application is working fine or not cool here are the details activity history so here you can see the two instance is launching status is in progress um, scaling policies we don't have any instances 
let me make it more visible cool so these are the two instances uh, the availability zone is 1a and 1b um, life cycle is in service uh, health status is healthy so basically if your status is not healthy it will take down that instance and deploy a new instance right monitoring we've got all the basic monitorings cool notification we don't have any notification tags uh, nothing fancy here if I go to my instances so the instance state is, is healthy activity history cool so it has successfully deployed the instance let's go to our target groups and verify if it has registered the targets <coughs> excuse me um, targets so here you can see two targets uh, have been registered one in this availability zone and the second one in this availability zone this target is currently passing target groups health checks if I go to instances it has started deploying our instance here you can see the instance is now deployed status is initializing um, let's wait till this is completely deployed and after that we will verify it via our public DNS of the load balancer right so these are the availability zones just as we wanted let's wait till this is completely finished and after that let's verify if it's working fine okay so the both of the instances is now ready if I go to my load balancer um, let's copy the public DNS name and if I paste it here in my browser I will be seeing the same web page cool so that's how you configure a highly available web application cool um, I guess that's all I wanted to show you in this video and I guess I've covered everything in the auto scaling group except the scaling policies um, for sure I will cover that in my future videos uh, and yeah that's how you create a highly available web application which is deployed across multiple availability zones right so as usual as part of my video let's uh, quickly uh, clean up all our resources because I don't want to end up using my free tier limits let's go to auto scaling groups and let's delete our auto scaling group um, okay so action delete yes delete so when this will be deleted uh, basically this will automatically terminate your instance uh, maybe it will take uh, something about four to five minutes and after that it will start terminating your instances so let's wait till our instance is completely terminated and after that we will clean up all our resources we will delete the launch configuration delete our load balancers and target groups we will um, clean up all resources right so let's go to instances and let's wait for four to five minutes uh, until it's automatically being terminating these instances so it is not terminating now it will take you about four to five minutes probably and after that it will automatically terminate these instances so let's wait till that so it took me about five minutes and it has automatically started terminating these instances cool so let's wait till this is completely terminated and after that we will clean up all the resources if I go to my auto scaling group um, cool so it has completely removed the auto scaling group um, let's go to our launch configurations and I will delete this launch configuration delete yes delete cool let's go to our load balancers 
um, if you try to remove the target group before removing your load balancer it won't let you delete it be and it will say you something like it is being associated with a load balancer so you have to first delete the load balancer and after that you will be able to delete the target group right so delete yes delete and target groups and action delete yes um, if I go to my instances let's see if it's completely terminated cool so all of these instances are completely terminated um, maybe it will take about one hour it will stay here it will not go by the screen uh, for one hour maybe uh, if you don't want to see this terminated instances you can go to the filter la let's say instance state and that's how we remove that right or you can also do um, instance state <coughs> and not terminate it right so let's go to our AMIs um, if you try to delete your snapshot if I go to my snapshots you won't be able to delete the snapshot uh, because it is associated with your AMI right so if you try to delete this uh, delete so you will get an error saying that it is being used by an AMI so first you have to deregister your AMI so here if you go there and deregister and after that you will be able to delete your snapshot as well so let's delete this snapshot action delete yes delete if I go to my dashboard I have uh, one key pair and three security groups let's delete the security group as well uh, this and this I'm gonna delete yes delete okay delete security group yes delete um, if I go to my dashboard so I have one key pair and one default security group so I will keep this key pair for my future videos um, cool so I guess that's all I wanted to show you in this video and I have covered everything in auto scaling group except the scaling policies for sure I will cover that in my future videos um, yeah that's how we you create your highly available web application cool so I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did make sure you like it share it with your friends and please subscribe to this channel see you guys in my next video take care bye bye